he will play it, even when he has COVID. <laughs> Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are a husband and wife and we'd like to welcome you to Teradice. And today we're taking a look at five games that we will always say yes to. Yep, so this is uh, regardless of when it is, what time of day, what time of year, well maybe 3 a.m. I'm not playing. I am. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> But I will give you a clue. These aren't our number one game. Like yeah. they're not our favorite. My number one is not yeah. on this list. So if you want to see what these <laughs> are and you want to play, then just keep watching. So diving right in, we're going to start with me in no particular order whatsoever. This is just one of my five. My <laughs> first one is Calico. So I love Calico. It is a tile, abstract tile laying game where you are making a quilt on an individual board and you are trying to attract quilts to come and lay on your beautiful quilt. Um, it is a super fun brain burning game that's just like quiet and everyone's sitting there thinking. And so, I don't know, I love it. It's like super comforting. It's very cute. Yeah, I, I can, would also play it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I can play it at any time of day. Like it's like a morning game. It's, it's cute. I love it. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. My number one here is my first love, Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you're doing an order? So this is your number one? No, no, not, not a particular order. It was just like, it's number the first one. one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it to ride was the first like hobby board game I ever got introduced mm -hmm. to. You're building train routes across America, across London, New York, and Europe, and all these fun different versions of it. I'll play any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, you have these hidden routes that you're trying to complete, and then you're drawing these colored train cards and laying them down to build routes. And you just mm -hmm. do one of those things on your turn. It's a total classic. Uh, if you haven't played it, you absolutely should. I will say yes to this game forever. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I feel like this is a cheat, but maybe it's not a cheat because there's so many different versions of Tickets to the Ride. That's so you're true. To <laughs> because there's the, like, the, like we love to pull out the New York or the London version if we just want to play like a 30 minute version of mm -hmm. Ticket to Ride. Yeah. So, I mean, I like yeah, that it's all the That's same fun. Game. All right. <laughs> so my number two would be probably no surprise to anyone based on what we like to put out on this channel. And that's going to be Villainous. And not Marble Villainous, which I did say in our video last week. I think it was last week that that's like my, like, I think the yeah. best well designed. Mm -hmm. But the one I will say yes to anytime is going to be OG Villainous um, Disney um, with now added Pixar. I am a big fan. <laughs> um, I love testing out all of those games. I love all the characters. Characters, huge Disney nerd, love getting seen the Dis the fandom incorporated into the mechanics. It's basically, if you don't know, it's where you take on the role as a Disney villain and you trying to be like, like do your plot, like fulfill your plot and uh, before the other villains do. And I just, I love it. It's villainous. Yeah. yeah I will play awesome. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. And yours? My number two would be my most played game of last year. Uh, we talked about this one recently, that is Scout. I just think it's this mm. awesome little card game. It's a ladder building, uh, ladder climbing game, which means, you know, I put something down, you're trying to trump that, and then they're trying to trump that, and whoever can collects those cards. Uh, and it's a really, really interesting game where you can't rearrange your hand, and you have to play cards that are touching each other in sets. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, really cool, like, oh, if I remove these, it sandwiches these together, and now I have a new set. Uh, just really fun. It has never gotten old for me despite the like 50-ish plays we had last year. And for like, yeah. it doesn't really have a theme. Like they tried to put a theme on the American version, but like it really doesn't. And so, yeah. But it's still like really engaging. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he he will play this anytime because he, bring this, he brings this to work. It's in, in my backpack. backpack. <laughs> and we've also pulled this out at a bar. Or those people. Yeah. No. <laughs> It was with board game people. It was with it was board, at a board game, game people. Convention. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he really does. We'll play it anywhere. And then pause, please. What is my next one? So my number three is Shobu. So I've talked about this on the channel before. It is a beautiful chess-like abstract game. It's so good. Um, where it's just like aesthetically so beautiful. I think that's why I will play it all the time because when I have a house someday, I would love just to sit out on a table all the time. So it's just like we're <laughs> it's gonna have to sit next to Kuala now. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like. Like where this is rope divides the middle and uh, you're trying to move your every stone you move on your offense then the other person then you get to move it on your defense against them is that how you describe your defense it? offense yeah okay think... opposite but <laughs> i just it is like so pretty and i just i think that's why it's like i it clickety clack with the rocks it's so cute yes okay go ahead. <laughs> sweet uh, my next one is kind of funny because it's huge and takes forever to play and forever to set up and that is scythe i literally would start this at midnight like <laughs> i absolutely love scythe it has just such an 
interesting. I love the action system, which is all about optimization. It's all about, can I do the top and the bottom action? And then I move to the next location and do that top and bottom. Um, and essentially you're basically in this like, alternate history Europa post-World mm -hmm. War One kind of thing where there were mechs that were used for battle and now we know that's a bad thing so they're now used for farming but also sometimes battle. <laughs> um, but I really like it. It's a cool little resource game where uh, your resources stay on the board. You're trying to win multiple different ways, population tracks and these different goals. It's, it's very fun. That's a real commitment mm -hmm. to play that at any time. It is, but I would say yes. Okay. And I have said yes nice. every time. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so my next one is going to be Azul and specifically Azul Summer Pavilion. And now this is a beautiful, also tile laying game. I seem to seem a pattern. I like tile laying <laughs> games or abstract games. And it's where you are making a beautiful like mosaic and the color scheme is really nice in Summer Pavilion, but you're trying to get certain patterns of certain colors and those are new points. Um, but again, it gives me the same feeling as Calico if everyone's working on their own board and you're just doing like rain burnery stuff. So yeah. I mm -hmm. like kind of games like that. Sweet, cool. My next one is also incredibly long, and that is Great Western Trail. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love this game. <laughs> it's basically you're deck building a deck of your cows, that's like your herd, and then you're running this rondelle, which is like an action system where you loop back around to the start once you finish them all, uh, where you're running through town, like trading different cows and hiring people to go get bandits cleared out and like, <laughs> all these kind of fun little actions and by the time you get to the end you get to sell all the cows in your hand and your train goes to some city and delivers all those cows it is a ton of fun i got COVID a while ago I and <laughs> i sat in bed playing great western trail and board game arena yes. for days so he will play it even when he has COVID. <laughs> All right, and my last one um, is Wingspan by Stonemaier Games. I also love this game. Um, it is it's where you are playing a bird watcher and you're um, basically documenting birds that you see. And this is funny because the very first time I played this game, I did not enjoy it. Um, he also tried to have me play it at 10 p.m. Uh, for the very first time. I've learned that lesson since. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I love the point system of this game of trying to collect different matches of birds, different categories, how you build your engine with getting enough food to cut, to feed the different birds in order to, and all, so many different birds do different mm -hmm. things and how it all works together from a design standpoint, I think is so cool. I. I just yeah. love Wingspan. All versions, I mean, all of the expansions that we've out one. with, I will always play Wingspan if you ask. Yeah, and I think we especially are loving Wingspan Asia with the new two player mode. It adds some really fun goals to well, it. Well, I really yeah. like the six player mode of Wingspan mm -hmm. Asia. That was just oh, the a mode. really <laughs> cool way to yeah. be able to play it with a lot of people. It mm -hmm. was very cool. Yeah, sweet. And your last one? My last one is Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. This is a... <laughs> this is such a controversy. <laughs> <laughs> it so is because I love it. And you may think it's mostly because it's dinosaurs. Yeah. I also chose it. Yeah. It's the game that I don't like anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write basically is a, a roll and write, that's the roar part, where you are building out a dino park where you have different dinosaurs and different pens and you have like roller coasters and other random things because it's an amusement park and then at the end of every round you're going to run your like tour through trying to just like cause the most excitement for your guests. Now what I think is really fun about this is that you can hire these different like specialists based on these cards that come out and the way that you get all your resources is this like dice drafting where you're choosing all the dice and then dice worker placement where you're placing them back on this other board to like perform different actions and you can perform perform actions other people have performed, but uh, you're kind of like trying to make it harder for them to do that by putting dice that make them take penalties, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what to say else about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the dinosaur theme. I'm not a big Jurassic Park fan. That's kind of like what it is. Um, mechanics are cool. Well, when you come over, please ask me to play it with you. I'll play. <laughs> He'll play it with you. <laughs> All right, guys, that is our each top five games that we will play at any time. And it wasn't our favorite. My favorite game is actually Viticulture. Yeah, mine's um, Everdell. Yeah. <laughs> so why we why won't you play Everdell? I guess that's important. Yeah. Why aren't you going to play Everdell anytime? I won't play Everdell anytime because I think it's very good at three players and uh -huh. like pretty good at four players. And I won't play it outside that. So mm -hmm. if like people... 
Uh, well, we play two we player and that's player. enjoyable. But like, I like if five people ask me to play Everdell, I'm gonna say no. Whereas like most of these other games, I try to like squeeze that in and just make it work. Mm. Um, so that's the main reason. The other is that it can run very, very long when you have lots of players, especially if you haven't played it before. Yeah. So I'm sometimes just not in for just sitting there when like I, I know what to do and the point disparity is gonna be so high because I'm like so good at it now that it'd just be like, okay, I got 200, you got 100, the that's end. That's true. That, that <laughs> yeah. is my one issue with Everdell. It's like the kind of, it's the ending where someone will finish and then with Everdell in other games, you can keep going. Like, but, oh, keep I'll keep going. going. I'll keep, I, oh, I still have a turn. Oh, Everyone's just, doing the dishes and cleaning up and I'm like yeah, finishing yeah. my last turn. I've left. Um, he's still going. I've literally left. Um, but, so mine is Viticulture. So I, like, I would almost play it anytime someone asks me. But I don't want to get like sick of it, if you know what I mean. Like, cause I think the mechanics. It's like are a fine wine. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a fine wine, and I just have to sip on it Can't and not it. drink it all the time. <laughs> um, and that's a perfect description. That's how, why I don't play. It's why I won't play it all the time. So <laughs> that is our top five and our number one favorite game. Now, I think it would be silly not to mention that probably the game we would play all the time is our very own game, um, Bark Avenue, which we're designing. <laughs> so a uh, little plug here. That game is almost finished. We're getting ready to send that off to the printers. If you mix the Kickstarter I'm gonna leave, and you still are interested in getting the deluxe version of the game, you can get a, you can click the link down below and it's going to send you to that backer kit page. We're going to still have that open for a couple more weeks. So if you're interested in getting the deluxe version, squishy poops, you can go ahead and click that link down below. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. And we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy playing! playing.